In the torch lighting ceremonies, Dr. Charles E. Friley, president of Iowa State College, will hand the match to Mr. Truman, and then the torch of higher learning will be lighted by the president. The torch will then be picked up by Don Ferguson, Iowa State College student from Ottumwa, carried to a waiting car. The torch will be driven to Des Moines, from whence it will be run in relay style by Iowa State College students to Ames, where it will be used to light the permanent Visha torch, which will shine over Visha week each week, each year rather, as a symbol of the light of higher education. And now, appearing on the platform with his company is the President of the United States, Harry S. Truman. Taking their places now, the presidential party, Gus Truman sitting immediately to the left of the speaker's stand on our right, this is Harry Truman, and Margaret Truman being shown to her place two seats over. on this platform, but we certainly are very proud to have them visit us. We are grateful to Mrs. Truman and Miss Margaret Truman for their presence here. Our friends, a distinct honor and privilege has been extended to me today in my being permitted to welcome to Ottumwa and to introduce to you at this time the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I can't tell you how very much I appreciate this uh, wonderful, wonderful reception. One of the finest gatherings I've seen in a long time. Not since Dexter Highway have I seen such a gathering. 1948 that was, if you remember. And there were 10 acres of people at that meeting. Everybody wanted to know of me how you measured people by the acre. And I said you could put about 9,600 people on an acre, and you multiply that by 10, that's 96,000. I don't know how many there are here. I understand, and I've been reliably informed, that there's a young man working for the opposition who's been following me in a plane to look the situation over. Now, that young man is perfectly welcome to save a little money. If he'll buy himself a ticket and get on the train, I'll take him along. And I, <laughs> and I sincerely hope that he's been as highly pleased with the reception I've had this morning and with the crowds as I have. And I hope he'll make that report to the opposition so they can govern themselves accordingly. This morning, I want to talk to you briefly about your future and the future of agriculture all over the country. That's why I'm here to tell you the truth about what your government is doing. It's a most difficult thing for me to get the facts to the people. But I think I demonstrated on a, another trip, and on that trip I was followed also, I demonstrated to the people at that time that when they know the truth and the facts, you can't fool them. These are troubled times in the world. All of us know that the only way we can get a peaceful world is by keeping the United States strong and prosperous. That your meat packing business and all the other businesses in town depend on the incomes of the farmers for miles around. You know, too, that your businessmen and your farmers and your workers have a mutual interest in the prosperity of all of our e economy. Well, that's true in the whole country, too, because this country can't remain prosperous unless you in this area prosper. 
We must make sure that Iowa farmers never again have to burn their corn for fuel like they did 20 years ago. I intend to keep on working to see that farmers, workers, and businessmen get a fair deal, and that's all anybody can ask for. I'm going to make a speech later today at Lincoln, Nebraska. And I'm going to tell you what kind of a farm program we need. And I'm going to make it easy and simple for everybody to understand. And it won't be complicated or garbled. It'll be just exactly what we need. I'm going to discuss this problem specifically without dodging the issue, as many people have dodged them in the past. You hear today a lot of wild charges that anything new which we propose for the farmer is socialism and regimentation. That's an old cry. It's been going on for a long time. Back ever since 1887. That reminds me of a story about a man from my home state who was in Congress back in the 1880s. His name was William Henry Hatch. His name is attached to many laws which benefit the farmer. Congressman Hatch was the author of a law in 1887, which granted $15,000 a year for each state to set up an agricultural experiment station in connection with its agricultural college. There were a lot of folks who raised cane when that bill got to the Senate. We would have thought that the end of the world was just around the corner. Well, that sounds just like the attacks which are being made today against progressive measures. But it's even more interesting because a few miles north of here, at Ames, the Iowa State Agricultural College has been using Hatch Act funds since 1887. It is still using them today, and there's been no limitation on anybody's freedom in Iowa as a result that I know of. I think that our system of agricultural research and education provides real strength for our democracy. The old Iowa State College at Ames is outstanding, is an outstanding part of this great system. Has the same situation down in Missouri, and they've even got it in Kansas where that senator made that statement. The agricultural colleges in other states are doing likewise. Each one is a part of this great system of research and education that extends all the way from the federal government to the individual on the farm. Whenever you hear people attacking agricultural education or other progressive measures for the benefit of the farmer, the worker, and the rest of the people, just remember that agricultural education has been a part of our democratic way of life since the days of Thomas Jefferson, and I hope it always will be in the future. Now, I want you people to distinctly understand that I'm here reporting to you as your servant. I am here as the President of the United States giving you an outline of things just as they are in Washington and just as I would like to have them to be in Washington. I have a perfect right to do that. That's part of my job, to let you know just exactly what the facts are. And when I tell them to you, I think you can understand them. They're not garbled by somebody who wants to give a wrong impression. You understood them in 1948? You're gonna understand them in 1950. And when we get through, when I report to you the next time, you're gonna be happy and satisfied with the result. I can't tell you how very much I appreciate this magnificent reception this morning. It's grand. I'll remember it all my life. Thank you very much. We thank you very much, President Truman. Now we have a little gift honoring your birthday. A 125-pound cake made by the members of Baker's Union Number 412. 
two young people, Harriet Lester and Lynn McCullough, would like to present the cake to you at this time. Maybe a longer first lighting ceremony than we expected, folks. <laughs> and now the porch is lighted. The torch of higher education. Don Ferguson, after shaking hands with President Truman, will carry that torch to a waiting car. There he goes. In relay style, the torch is passed from hand to hand as the new runner takes over. And now, the last of the 150 runners who have brought the torch from Des Moines to Ames, Glenn Brand, is arriving on campus with the light which was lighted in Ottumwa by President Truman, torch of higher education. has now been placed in its permanent resting place. The plaque will be fitted into place, a permanent plaque later to be put there, a symbol of higher education. And so we've come to the end of these opening ceremonies. 
which began in Otomo this morning with the arrival of President Truman and the eventual uh, lighting of the torch down there and the carrying of that torch to Des Moines by car and then a series of 150 runners who have brought it by stages from Des Moines to Ames. And so Visha is officially lit up for this season and officially opened. And this is the plaque itself, which has been placed on this permanent pedestal here in the middle of the Iowa State College campus. The pedestal which has been constructed for this year's Visha celebration. This symbol of higher education in America was lighted by the 33rd President of the United States of America, Harry S. Truman. By lighting this torch in Ottumwa, Iowa to signify the light ahead in higher education, the President cited Iowa State College as an example of progressive American colleges and universities promoting greater effort toward cultivation of the intellect. Iowa State College will forever be thankful to the President for his contribution to the state of Iowa and the nation in advocating higher education for American youth.